Okay, we're going to be working or testing Tom's controller this morning. Conformal coating dried last night. So, anyway, we're going to start off with a uh, just a standard trigger probe and port one. We're going to start with hot dog simple this morning. So, to turn the uh, a hot dog simple just means it operates kind of like the old the old uh, controller does the, the original Ortec. So all you do is you come down here to, and I, I hope this is staying in focus, it's hard for me to tell. But you just come down here and you turn this guy on, and watch it boot up. It's got the 503 load in there as you can see. Alright. And you can tell when it's booted up is when the temperature starts reading. Um, and the LCD first initializes I think it defaults to it has a couple default temperatures in there maybe I should make those zero so people know it's not actually reading the temperature but anyway that's another topic okay so <laughs> I was gonna make this short so um, yeah so once you get it turned on see we'll go ahead and turn the, the back panel light on whoa that kind of washed it out in the camera didn't it anyway that's how you turn the panel light on hey you can make we'll make sure all the little lights working right here they look good all right and all right i'm going to turn this off because it looks like it's washing out in the camera and uh yeah so the way you start the grill is is it defaults to a temperature and if you can see there's a cursor blinking right under the um the temperature right here all right you just kind of just turn the knob whatever temperature we'll set it to 225 okay and then you hit enter oop enter save oop <laughs> make sure I did that I don't know if I hit the up arrow or down arrow it looks like oh no it looks like it's okay then you just have to press and hold the stop start button for at least four seconds so one two oh. so it should be about four seconds and that's how you start and stop it and uh and as you can see, it's running. I'm sure you can hear it too. So we'll go ahead and let this thing fire up and I'll be back. Oh, and that's that's basically hot dog simple. Alrighty, as you can see, well we're pretty much up to temperature. Yeah, the, the probe's at 212, it'll it'll catch up a little bit. Yeah, everything seems to be working pretty good. It's on max smoke. And uh you can see we're on at, how to read the profiles up here is we're on profile one okay there's four minutes left in profile one and the target temperature for profile one is 225 degrees Fahrenheit alrighty so one of the things I wanted to show you is how to read this profile section up here on the uh, status screen okay and so it's showing it's on profile one there's six minutes remaining this is the time remaining in profile one and the target temperature is 225 which we already looked at and set before we even turned it on now let's say you're you're cooking and six minutes just isn't going to be long enough to finish the cook all right so or you want to hold it at 225 longer before it goes to the next profile. So what you can do, as you can see the cursor is under 225 right now. We can move it over using the arrow keys here. Just going to move it one over. You can see it's under the six minute mark. Let's say, well, we want to add another 10 minutes to profile one. And uh, so you just come down here and we can just... Oops. Uh, set to 16 minutes. Okay, hit enter save. You probably didn't see that. Hit enter save right here. And, and there you go. And now, so now there's 16 minutes left in profile one. And you can go to the profile and see uh, to get to the, the profile one settings. You can just hit the knob which brings up the menu 
okay and uh, you can either scroll up and down using the knob or you can use the arrow keys and uh, so we're under profile one the cursor is under profile one you can hit the knob again and you can see it's increased now this is different than the time remaining this is the total cook time now that we had set for profile one and you can also change this you can change the target temperature and you can set the cook time okay so now we're gonna switch the uh, probe ports <laughs> sorry if I can hold the camera without dropping it yeah so what we want to do is we're gonna just switch from uh, meat probe port one here which you can't see right there we're gonna switch it to port two now you'll see that it doesn't immediately update that's because the controller only scans ports sorry the controller only scans ports that aren't plugged in uh, every uh, about 30 seconds or so so it can take a little bit to update but as you can see it updated it's reading pretty close to what the other one read go ahead and disconnect that and we'll go ahead and plug it in port three here okay and uh, yeah we'll wait yeah it's up to 30 seconds it depends on where in the uh, scan process you know we plug it in right okay so all three ports seem to be working just fine okay so the controller when it first boots up and using the default recipe um, it defaults to profile one being held and how you know that is if you see zero minutes right here right there and it's not moving uh, and this can you can set any profile to be held but uh, it the profile is being held and how to look at that as you hit the, the knob push the knob button or the knob to get up get the menu we can scroll down to profile one oops and you can either hit enter save or the knob doesn't matter and you can see right here that it's held so you just cursor down cursor down now if I if I turn that to in and then hit enter save it will now go to profiles two three and four okay I'm not going to do that and the reason why is because profile two has a cook time of zero all right <laughs> so it's going to jump through two three and four very quickly oh it has a cook time of zero and it's not held I should say so it's going to jump through uh, it'll jump through two three and four and then turn off and um, I don't really want that to happen right now by the way if you're wondering about <laughs> this wire right here uh, this is my ground wire because I use a, a plexiglass uh, front panel on my grill right here and I want to keep the make sure the controller is grounded properly because this is an aluminum faceplate okay hey couple uh, I don't know if I want to call them child safety features but they're just a, a couple <laughs> features to prevent accidental uh, controller changes one is this toggle switch right here the toggle switch has to be pulled out before it can be pushed on or, or moved on or off right so you can't just push it left you have to pull it out pull it out and then move it uh, to either the on or off position the other safety feature is the lock unlock so you just you can see it just went to controls locked <clears throat> now if you try turning the knob or hitting anything except for the panel light the panel light is the only thing that'll that will uh, operate in the um, in the lock state things and um, and to unlock it is pretty easy just hit the uh, the button again you'll see it's unlocked and now everything will start working okay all right okay and to stop the grill from the front panel you just press and hold the stop start button for about four seconds 
Okay. There you go. Right. You can kind of hear a beep. The barbecue's kind of loud. You'll hear it beep four times, and then it'll go into cool down state. And this is um, uh, this will have this will be five minutes long. Uh, that's changeable in the web app. Well, basically, uh, cool down just runs the fan. So in other words, it, it won't turn the auger on. It just runs the fan and burns uh, whatever leftover pellets are in the uh, in the burn pot. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be setting the Wi-Fi. And uh, to set the Wi-Fi, you, uh, of course, have to turn the controller on. So what we want to do to, to get there, let me turn the panel light on. Maybe that will help a little bit. Uh, you just hit the knob button once, okay, and you can scroll down to config, hit enter save, or you can hit the knob button, and you will see uh, it defaults to this Muxall test and this password right here, uh, which won't be your home network more than likely. And uh, so to initiate a scan, you just turn the knob until you see scanning Wi Fi, and then it, it'll give you a list and you can just start scrolling through the different networks okay and uh, I went ahead and let me find it again I just changed our test network to Muxall test 2 okay and once you find that then you can scroll down and this is the fun part you can set your password T S T U V W uh, X Y Z. You kind of get the idea. And if you look in the manual, it's got a map of these things. So if you're looking for lowercase, you don't have to scroll through everything. And uh, and then you just keep just going over and then changing the characters you need. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that because I don't want to save that. Go ahead and hit the knob again. Go back in there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, look at the scan. It's, but we're, anyway, we're going to select Muxall 2, hit enter. And then once you hit enter, it's going to ask you to please uh, reboot. So you just turn the controller off. And you can turn the controller back on. And wait for it to boot up. It doesn't take too long. Okay, now turn the panel light on. Hit the knob button once. We're going to scroll down one to config. Hit enter. And you can see now we've got an IP address and it says the Wi Fi is connected, so we're good. Okay, so now that you have your IP address, um, because your controller is connected to your network, you just type it in your favorite web browser. I'm going to be using um, Firefox today, but it works with Chrome and Safari and um, and on on pretty much any device so so it was 192.168.1.132 I do believe yep and the, uh, the username is not changeable the password is Muxall and if you forget it it's right here <laughs> and just click on login uh, you can save it if you want. I'm not going to save it right now. And uh, and here it is. So this here's your status. This give the control tab. This tab right here is um, this is how you control the controller. And so here's your status. I don't have it, this thing's not plugged into the, the barbecue anymore. So the chamber temp and everything's reading zero. But uh, I just want to show you this real quick. So here's your cooking status, cook state, and probe numbers, or cook by probe number. And you can read through this. All this stuff's in the manual. Here's how you fill your pellet hopper uh, for pellet uh, level tracking. Here's your profiles that I was showing you in the, uh, on the LCD front panel. Um, here's, here's where you can see it defaults to 180. Yeah, cook time defaults to 10, and it's held. So that's kind of what we we're playing with earlier. 
Here's your smoke control for um, max smoke all the way down to precision cook. Uh, cook by probe is in the manual and and one thing to remember if you use cook by probe you need to have one of these profiles held doesn't matter which one it's just one of them needs to be held at a temperature you want to your grill to stay stay at because the way cook by probe works is as it tries to cook until you're so if you're cooking pork in this case it, and your probe is plugged into your pork um, it, this the controller will cook all the way until it hits the pork hits a temperature of 145 degrees and then it's either going to turn off when done right here or it's going to go into a, a smoke slash warm up mo warm up um, mode okay I, I call it smoke mode but it's actually like it's like 150 degrees something real low and um, and, you know to keep the food warm so so yeah just remember if you use cook by probe something one of these guys needs to be held <laughs> all right otherwise what will happen if if none of these are held like this for instance as soon as this gets to 10 minutes it's going to see there's zero minutes zero minutes zero minutes i'm done and then it's going to turn off all right and you don't want that uh these are your manual uh, if you want to run the fan, you can just uh, turn on the fan. If you want to run the auger, you can turn on the auger. This is good if you're changing pellets. And, um, and then after you make changes on this, you have to click enter save. All right. And, and then these buttons down here stop and start the cook. Okay. And you can see if, it, if this thing's kind of blinking like it is, then it needs... It needs to have these settings submitted. I'm not going to submit them right now. Uh, here's your recipes. You can save. You can save all these settings into a recipe and call it whatever you want, Tom's. And uh, click save. And uh, maybe not the. <laughs> maybe not that. Anyway, um, so um, that's that. Uh, if you if you click this add tab up here it pulls up a little menu right here uh, here's here's how you access the graph you just click on the graph this will this will graph your cook it graphs your your target chamber temp your uh, your your current tam chamber temp your uh, cook by probe uh, target temp and your and whatever cook by probe number you have selected temp it only it only graphs the the probe that's selected okay and there's some other stats in here you can look at uh, if you want to change some of the config you just click on this add tab go to the menu and uh, this right here tells you your auger run minutes this is your pellet level tracking stuff uh, and you can read through some of the stuff in the manual I won't go through it very much I just wanted to show you this stuff Here's your um, Wi-Fi SAID and password if you want to look at it. And here's some other network settings. Here's how you change your temperature probes if you're using uh, RTDs, thermocouples, or thermistors. Uh, here's some of your more popular uh, thermistors, the Camp Chef, Fireboard, Maverick, and Inkbird. And, um, and then the RTDs, which are what triggers are. Uh, these two right here, the first two, the PT100 and PT1000, are the most common. Uh, everything defaults to PT1000 because that's what Traeger uses. And uh, I, the, the Patsy has uh, predictive analytics temperature control. This is not a PID system. This is a different kind of control system. And these are basically the settings for it and I recommend leaving it on default unless you have an insulated grill and then you can slow it down a little bit this is like a gas pedal setting um, of course Fahrenheit and Celsius uh, here's your flame out detection you can enable or disable it um, and then the rest of these I would leave uh, just default for now uh, this right here is, is um, if you're if you're gonna go ahead, if you're gonna fire up a hot barbecue, you can bypass the ignite fire state. Uh, yeah, I don't don't ever check this unless 
you, you really don't want the igniter to turn on. Uh, here's your igniter on time, it defaults to four minutes. Um, and this is, I'd leave all this stuff. This, this right here is a duty cycle for the warm up or for the ignite fire. Um, uh, yeah, I'd, it, this, this ensures there's enough fuel in the burn pot to ignite. So uh, unless you have an insulated grill, I'd leave this default. And here's your cool down time. If you want it to cool down longer, you can change that. And you have to hit save when you're done, okay? And the last tab is the update tab. And you can see the current version, status okay. And you can do uh, the latest release, which is currently is the 503 release, so you're updated the latest. And to do it, you just click update. And that's it.